Fresh. What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. No, we're not. We think we're ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, Hector of Indigo! Yeah, hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yes! Good sir, thank you so much for uh, for doing this, buddy. Uh, if you could please uh, properly introduce yourself, let me know whereabouts the world you are right now, and uh, plug or promote anything and everything. Okay, so my name is Heck, uh, and I am the vocalist for Indigo. Um, I am exactly in my backyard right now. I've got a little fire going on. I've got some lighting going on. Uh, I just want to enjoy this in my nature. Uh, I love being outdoors. And if you guys can find us anywhere with NDGO, um, NDGO on Spotify, Apple, and of course our Instagram, um, literally NDGO. Uh, it's it, we we took out the eyes, so for sure, so we could. But yeah, living I'll in the year three thousand without those eyes, right there. You're in the future. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. So I noticed that I noticed that you guys are a single only band, like no EP, no album. At least I couldn't find any of that stuff. Is there is there a reason for that? So um, logistically, it makes sense for uh, for the project right now. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, um, I'm the only one funding it. Uh, Jeremy's working on his end, doing his thing for the band, and uh, so things like that. Kind of, we start realizing all that take an effect so um singles has been our most uh, effective way uh we do have an album but again it as a you know band with uh the amount of uh, streamers and listeners at the moment it's it's kind of difficult to release an album and support it because again you would have to go back on you know you go out on the road try to support an album uh but uh since we kind of fairly new to be honest with you we're not new but we're new we're we haven't really made any moves. I released uh, almost an EP last year, consecutive re uh, releases, because I wanted to get to what we've been writing recently, which we're about to get to it. Uh, so the next single that we're about to release on March 22nd, uh, I See You, will be the last one before uh, we start looking into legitimately releasing uh, a record called, well, right now, I call it Dino. Um, as if any rock climbers out there, Dino is an explosive move from one hole to the next. So I went all out with that one. And um, it honestly speaks more of who I am uh, at this very moment. So um, I went through a change in February last year and I started writing these songs with my buddy Kev Karestis. So um, shout out to that motherfucker, man. That guy's sick. He's, he's a bad motherfucker. Anyways, um, so yeah, we started writing records. <laughs> and that's the one I'm looking forward to, to be honest with you. That's that's something that I'm very, very proud of. I mean, I'm proud of everything, especially this new single coming out. But um, it's something, like I said, it's it's generally me. It's it's uh, it's what I've become over the years now and understanding who I am and uh, really, truly loving what I do. Um, so, yeah. In my opinion, your vocals are somewhere in the range of like, Issues, The Weeknd, Varsity, and Michael Jackson, like all combined somehow. Is that is that somewhat well, accurate? Be... And and would you who would you say inspired you to want to even be a vocalist in the first place? You know what? So I'm glad you asked that question because I didn't know for the longest time. I've liked so many vocalists. I mean, I'm I'm glad you Michael Jackson, uh, Varsity, um, and I forgot the last one you met. Uh, Every single one of them is 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 always an inspiration to somebody, right? And they're all amazing vocalists. I mean, MJ was the top, right? But with me, uh, I literally was having epiphanies um, earlier last week when I was working on the band's trailer, and I was working electrical, and uh, I started the thing. I I was talking to my wife about this record that my mom showed me when I was a kid, and it's actually a record called uh, La Historia, Spanish record. Um, that completely live. I uh, obviously as a kid, I spoke Spanish. Uh, well, I'm, I'm losing, I'm using you, losing you just a little bit on the audio. Can you repeat the name of the record again? Yeah, so it's actually a Spanish record. Let me let me go inside real quick because it got a little windy, and I don't want to do that to you. So there's a Spanish record called uh, Historia Sin Fin. Okay. Um, 
legitimately in love with that record as a kid. So it's actually, uh, it's called the Banda Machos. Like, I kid you not, it's like 90s, 96, I think it was. And this record was just um, something that I fell in love with. Uh, and sorry, I'm trying to set up some lighting in here for you. Um, and so I fell in love with this record as a kid. Um, and the sound, and everything. so I started singing Spanish first or anything. Um, and so I fell in love with that record. Then I started listening to rock and I and Michael Jackson. And then if anybody knows Selena, um, from Texas, actually Corpus Christi, um, a lot of her records. So a lot of Spanish, I realize, uh, the used, you know, when I started listening to the 2004 time frame. 2003. I, got, I got two used tattoos in love and death right, yeah, th hey. right there hey, man. nice i've got them right there nice so the used, the used was literally the uh band that i fell in love with um but wasn't my inspiration for vocals honestly i think i just really enjoy what i've heard over the years of my life as a kid as an adult as a teenager, you know, um, I was able to just listen to a broad variety of music. And within all of that, that I would sing from Spanish to English to Latin music that I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just trying to mimic what because of the sounds. I just love how the, the mimicking. But all this started coming to me last week that I realized, like, wow, that's the first record I truly fell in love with. And the only reason I, I figured that out was because I, I kept trying to remember what damn song it was. And it was that it was it's called La Historia Sin Fin. You know, a story without ending is what it means. And it's literally a love record, a heart broke, you know, and, and it's just the sounds are just phenomenal. Everything, the sound design, the uh, the vocalist, he changes. And he actually, I truly believe that guy that wrote that album must have been um, influenced by Michael Jackson 100% because there's these things that they do that the only way you can, you know, um, explain it is Michael Jackson. Which is insane because that that type of style of music, I guarantee you, they they must have fed off of that rock and roll style, but they used it for their own sound. It was really cool. So I catch myself now realizing and listening to my older stuff that it really connects to that band. Like like I said, Banda Macho. It's a span. It's a it's like a Norteño or whatever you want to call it. Interesting. Interesting. How how do you guys go about? like creating a song from scratch and is it mostly like diy like you do it all yourself or do you have somebody that you go to go to that does like the the final touches before we hear it okay so uh i work with so i've worked with if you look at the actual uh uh that's the they are from scratch so you're breaking up again a whole bunch for some reason on me. Okay. Hold on. Let me see if I can. Can you hear? Yeah. Let me see if I can uh, adjust. Okay. Uh, let's try that. That might help. All right. Uh, if you could repeat, I'm sorry. Oh, so on the left side, Dave is actually one of the individuals I started writing with for some covers. And then I was like, hey, man, you want to write an original? So we started, we wrote uh, Losing Game together. Jeremy, of course, incorporated his drums and, and of course, other things that he was involved with. Um, and then we went to Atlanta. I was like, hey, man, so we have three songs. Uh, let's go to Atlanta. And uh, those three songs that we're about to release after I See You. Actually, Losing Game's already released. I See You's about to come out. Then we have two more for y'all from that batch. And it's uh, Trippin' On You and Vibe, which are some of the best songs um, that I've written with these guys. So I wrote with Dave, Jeremy, Lee Rouse, and Josh Landry. Josh Landry's low spirit. Uh, Lee Rouse is in Florida now. He's doing great things, like always. Um, then you had, uh, of course, Jeremy and Dave. We all went up there. Um, so, yes, it was... Um, we always start with the sound or, or melody. Um, uh, if anybody's worked with Josh Landry, he, he's a genius as well. So it's always off of a melody. Uh, I may bring to the table or someone else will be like, hey, let's write about this. So um, I'll do everything I can as far as melodies and vocals. And then I introduce some production. But I only 
um, mimic sounds with my mouth because I can't play instruments. I don't sit behind a computer, but they seem to captivate everything I am asking for and more. And of course, everybody starts inputting their their thing. Uh, you know, Dave will throw his stuff in there. Jeremy will throw his stuff in there. Um, but what I did on this last record that I'm working on, the one that I truly believe that should be released as a record, um, is was just myself with all these voice memos and ideas and concepts of uh, visuals and then taking it to Kevin Caresses and telling him, hey man, bear with me. I have all these sounds and I have these ideas. And then he just created this world around it. So I give him everything I can that's in my mind. And then he puts his sauce in there with respect to what I'm looking for, the guitar riffs that I ask him to do. Or if he has something that that's better than what I'm asking, we definitely go with something like that. So it's always, I've always write with, it's always been that way. Always, I can do it with one and the other individual as long as they give me a chance to express what I'm, my melodies are, the vocal, the, the vision. So I, I start immediately creating like this whole world for that one song. And I think that's another reason that I don't mind releasing singles is because we are allowed to give us you know, give the attention these singles uh, deserve uh, for the next one. It's it's a very it's hard to come up with visuals, especially because of how touchy the subject. But um, it's something that I personally think it should be addressed. Um, and there's other people in this world that think the same way. But again, it, it just depends on who wants to listen to it. And, and honestly, it's if, if you take if you don't want to take the message away with you, I mean, by all means, that's on you. Uh, but the sound, the way the sound design created, the way the former guitarist um, created his riffs, um, it's very well thought out and put. So I truly love this next song and very proud of it. Um, I, that's actually the one, other than the song I wrote for my daughters, and of course I write music for my wife all the time, um, this song really you know, hit me in the, in the booth. Um, I had to take a few minutes. Uh, it got very emotional because it's it's real. You know, the, the topic discussed in the song is extremely real. And uh, yeah, so it just, it's one of those situations where uh, when you're in the studio and you know it gives you chills and you know you're emotional about it, then dive all in. So this every song gets the story it deserves, like the time. I guess that's another reason we really, so it gives us time to create what this song should be. But again, this one's very difficult. I just told the team, hey, we're going to have to release it because I can't think of visuals right now. And, and unfortunately, um, I don't do Indigo full time. Um, I still am a nine to five grinding away. But up until about three to four weeks ago, uh, we got terminated, my brothers and I. So um, it's been a little tough. So I couldn't, the budget that I've had before, that's completely gone at the moment. So at the moment, I'm just literally coming up with content on the fly and trying to figure out how I can connect to everybody on not just um, just for clout, but honestly just to connect with people because uh, I truly enjoy communicating like this with individuals. So I do it daily. Um, I And that's, I, that's another thing that I came up with was uh, the other night I was realizing if I have an amazing event going on, for example, writing Hollywood player in LA with, this uh, a couple weeks I mean uh, a couple months ago uh, I wrote this song called Hollywood Player explaining my entire day from the moment we wrote this song powerless to night going to Rainbow Room and then heading back to the apartment to write another song so I literally wrote the entire day of what I do and it sounds so phenomenal and I finally introduced something I was very scared to do I guess you can say uh, kind of like testy I added some uh, like Spanish taste to it. So, did they write you back? I'm sorry. Did they write you back? Did they write me back? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying, I added some Spanish to the uh, to the re to the record that I wrote. Oh, I think you said something about like I thought something was called Hollywood Player or something like that. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So the song I wrote a song in August time. Oh, frame okay, okay. I got you. Hollywood yeah, For some so, reason, I thought you were talking uh, about like a like a news outlet source or something, and uh, oh no, no, no like no. an article. <laughs> literally, 
literally, I, I wrote this song called Hollywood Player, and it was me being a player in the world of Hollywood, uh, rubbing shoulders with people I never thought. Eric Ron, you know, Fire from the Gods, Crown the Empire. All these homies were just lingering around in Rainbow Room and just like having this time of their life. And I was like, holy shit. So the entire night I'm captivating all this going on. And the reason I'm talking about this song is because I'm actually working on some content for it. So, um, it just completely, like I realized, I was telling my wife, I completely came up with this entire song discussing of the time that I wrote and finished Powerless, went on a car trip and listened to this new song uh, down Hollywood, and then ended up on Sunset Drive, going to Rainbow Room, and then having this vampire vibe. And I was like, hey, man, I know what I want to write. So we went and dug into this song called Hollywood Player. So it's sick. Hell yeah. Did you did you bring hot sauce for the trivia portion? Oh shit, I left it outside, man. But yes, I did. No I, worries, I'll grab some too. What what did you bring? I got tapatio. Okay, I got some uh, some pilsner infused beer hot sauce that I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. try. Uh, the cool thing about the trivia though is uh, Hector, you get to pick either a movie or a TV show that you've seen so many oh. times if i look up trivia on this movie or tv show there's no way i stump you okay bet what what movie or tv show have you seen the most okay so i say um fuck i don't watch a lot of tv uh so let's go with something i'm comfortable with i guess the office is the most i've watched with my wife I'm actually on my first run through of The Office from beginning to end, and I'm on season seven. Oh shit! I'm on season right seven. Uh, Tapatio, right there. Okay, I got the beer, the beer infused hot sauce. Um, let's right. see. Give me a second to look up some trivia on that. Uh, do you do you guys uh, do you guys have plans to to go on the road in at any time in 2024? Is that is that beyond 2024 as far as like? doing like a, a long West Coast run or something like that? No, as a matter of fact, um, so our manager, Danny, uh, is working on something great. Um, I don't know the exact dates right now, but yes, we are headed into our phase of tour. We're, we're trying to start making small runs uh, to kind of promote what we're trying to do. And again, it goes more like a movement. Um, I want people to feel like they can connect on a personal level because – that's where I want. To, I want to be at a personal level with everyone, um, and just enjoy everyone's story. Like I said, the stories are what captivate me. People's lives captivate me. Understanding where they're, you know, what they came through and stuff. So yes, uh, there will be. Ooh, I'm excited, but I, I can't tell you dates. I don't know uh, locations yet. Everything's being planned out. Um, they're doing it strategically, of course. But yes, Danny McManus, our manager, is killing it. Um, he's definitely getting us prepped for that. Hell yeah! All right, well let's uh, let's tr try and stump you on some office trivia. Here we go. In the office, do you recall the name of the award that Phyllis wins at the Dundies? Ooh. No, I have no clue, man. You don't I remember? Don't... Okay, stop. <clears throat> the answer is busy. The busiest Beaver Award. I'm gonna do some hot sauce with you. Don't worry. Cheers. Just to do a little swig. All right. Woo! Mm. Never do you, done that. Before. Do you normally like hot sauce or not really? Um, I like hot sauce, but not like that, man. That shit's spicy. <laughs> um, I literally just dabble. Oh, no worries. Uh, do you have a go-to munching meal? Munching meal. Your favorite munching uh, meal after a great day for some reason. A absolutely i do um especially late night munchies if you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, i would say fruit like any kind of fruit or um pastries so Paste. any pastry any fruit so like a, a blueberry filled donut oh man that would be actually right <laughs> now that sounds fire hell yeah that sounds really <laughs> blueberry right, well i love <laughs> donuts I'm gonna give you one more shot in the office redemption trivia. One more shot. And there's the episode called The Fire. Almost everyone gets this wrong that picks the office trivia, by the way. Uh, 
who actually started the fire and how in the episode The Fire? Dwight. It is not Dwight. I'll give you one more guess. Oh, shit. Like I said, I don't watch TV much. Uh, started the fire. Oh, uh, Ryan started the fire. No? It is Ryan. Do you? I'll, I'll give it to you. Do you remember how he started it? Um, I... I don't. My wife's going to kill me. Uh, I, she knows I don't watch TV much. She's going to kill me. She's like, you know this. <laughs> but no. He left He left a pita in the toaster oven. Oh, jeez. You don't have to do the hot sauce. I, I didn't stump you. Mm. But uh, I'll take it. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Hector, do you have anything that freaks you out? You're scared of this. These are phobias that you have. And if they happen, you just you just get freaked out. Yes. Ocean. The ocean. So no deep sea fish and nothing like that. If I can't see it, I don't want to be above it. Yeah. So if I can't see down, I mean, I'll be in a river. Uh, I'll dive in, you know, 20 feet, 25 feet, but I could see a clear river. Right. But if it's an ocean and it's dark, nah, you're out of your mind, man. There's no way. Sharks don't come to my house. I don't go to shark's house. <laughs> I got you. I sit sharks. Yeah. Hell yeah. Is there is there anything, Hector, today that we maybe didn't discuss that you want to plug or chat about before we let you go? Honestly, the uh, only thing is if you guys can pre-save that on Spotify. I know I personally use every platform to listen to music, but if we can just, you know, pre-save the Spotify, it's in our bio on Instagram. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you like what you hear, just stick around. I promise you this uh, new record and... Uh, Everything else that we have releasing is at its tip-top shape. It's sick. It's uh, it's one of my best, or it is the best work so far that I've done. You said I'm March excited. 22nd is the date the next March single? 22nd is I See You comes out. Yes, March 22nd. March 22nd. Well, uh, if anyone gets a chance, grab that, uh, unless uh, you have a second. Or, but if not, we'll we'll throw a pre-save link in the chat right now so everybody can hopefully click that and, uh, and save and support. But uh, Hector, this was fun, man. I'm glad I was able to stump you a couple times. Well, one, one and a half times, really, on the Office Trivia. New single on, on March 22nd. And then, uh, like you said, hopefully we get a, a decent little run here for the band to play a bunch of shows so we can come out and support, man. But this is a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Much love, man. Thank you so much for having me. You guys have a great day. I'm going to throw this on, on YouTube tomorrow, and I'll send over the link for uh, so you can like tag you in some stuff, if that's cool. That'd be great. That'd be great. We love it. Hell yeah. Let, thank you so much. Much love. Thank Peace. you, sir. Hector of Indigo! Yeah, hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yeah! Cheers, brother.